So welcome to another Wellness Wow Day, where we talk about those big warm moments, putting your well-being first and transforming, transforming your life for the better. So whether it's someone's story, some tips, tricks and advice, these are for you to help you create the lifestyle that you love. So today we are talking about emotional resilience and you are going to have to bear with me because if you can't tell I've got a bit of a sticky throat because I've been volunteering at the baseball all weekend and it's been amazing but I've been encouraging and shouting crowds probably a bit too much. So please bear with me if I am a bit croaky at all. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's talk about emotional resilience because that's why we're here today. Okay, so emotional resilience literally means emotional ability to bounce back. Okay, so resilience is that spring back or bounce back strength, and emotions is our emotional well being or emotional health. So, how do we handle these shock or stressful situations that come up in life? So, these situations could be a family matter. It could be personal relationships. It could be financial. It could be work-based. So you turn up, you got made redundant. Your partner breaks up with you. There's been a bereavement. Um, maybe a problem in the workplace. Maybe there's some sort of conflict. Maybe there's been a problem with the office. There's loads of these different environments that can come up. And I'm sure if you think about it, you can think of quite a lot that come across in your day-to-day -day life. Okay, hopefully not too many that are top levels like breakups, redundancies and things like this. But we do come across little things like maybe you've got a shared office and there's somewhere you want to sit because you need to speak to someone and you walk in and there's somebody sat there. Okay, that may sound really small, but if your emotions aren't in sort of a great way, then that can actually push you over and become much more stressful. Okay, so even a small thing like say someone sitting in your seat can throw off your balance okay and realistically we'll go in and go oh okay and just carry on but sometimes we can't Have you ever noticed that when you're not feeling that good maybe you're tired maybe you've had a lot of things going on you're not feeling really good and you feel like you kind of want to hug and then the littlest thing just makes you cry yeah okay that's the situations we're talking about. They're the ones we want to avoid, okay? So we're going to pick this up and look about putting you first so that you feel emotionally on top of the world, the most important thing, okay? So like I said, there's a few ways that this can talk up. Let me see if I've got any. Nope, that's a few of what I've got for you. So that's pretty good. So you've got those emotional, serious health problems. That was the other one that I had noted, actually. So anything, say you've gone to the doctor and you've got the test results back those sorts of things because you can you're preparing yourself you may prepare yourself for the worst and then you may have tears of relief because it's completely opposite you see it doesn't always have to be a negative either so it can be a positive okay so what are we going to do because really everyone wants a good emotional well-being okay because it's not just about handling a situation it's about what you can do consistently and ongoing so that when these situations occur you're feeling in a good state, okay? Because there's one thing is to handle it in the time, but it's also recognizing it when it's coming, okay? And again, if you're in a great emotional well-being, it becomes much easier to recognize, okay? So it's kind of all, you can see how it's all connected here. So what can we do? We wanna, we wanna get into this because this is gonna start and bring it all together. It's not just recognizing it, it's helping our ability to manage these situations, okay? So we're gonna start off with number one, okay? And we're gonna start by being kind to ourselves. Now, this may seem quite trivial, but I put it as number one, simply because it's the one thing that we're actually least inclined to do. So I wanna stress this first, okay? Particularly if you choose to switch off or jump around, I want you to recognize being kind with yourself. Okay, you want to give yourself the space to acknowledge your feelings. Okay, recognize that it's okay sometimes to feel angry, feel upset, but also to give yourself the space if you need to grieve, you need to be hurt, or you need to celebrate. Okay, if it is like the test results that weren't as you planned and were better, they were, uh, say, negative and you expect it to be positive, you can actually celebrate that. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. All right, but start by being kind to yourself. Okay, don't beat yourself up and go, Oh my god, that was so bad, I can't believe I did that. Okay, 
because that's the one thing we always do. When you start feeling that you've responded in a negative way, you've responded highly emotionally, so, oh my God, I can't believe it. We all come up with that. That's not being kind to yourself. So be kind, go, it's okay, I made a mistake. Okay, it doesn't feel good. And set out those apologies, the little things, maybe even just yourself, maybe journal in it. Because number two is actually journaling and writing these feelings down. Now, I actually wanted to say safe space, okay? Because being kind and actually allowing our emotional well-being is about having that safe space. Now, journaling is a great safe space because you can write things down, shut the book and leave them, okay? What you can also do is write everything down, rip it up and bin it and get rid. Okay, so it kind of can do two things. You can either just write it, you can write it and read it later, or you can write it and get rid. So you've got these options of how you get rid of that energy. But the one thing you'll find is that by releasing and letting it go, you're actually letting go of that sort of pent up that helps you hit to pop moment later, okay? Because remember, and if you think back about this, think of the time that you popped you went, oh my God, and just absolutely let rip, or you burst into tears for no reason. Think about the little buildups that were happening, right? So it's these little buildups, as we're sensing them, emotional well-being, we become better at this. We're writing them down and sensing where we're feeling a little unsteady. We're giving ourselves a release. Therefore, we're not getting this building simmering pot that's building up, okay? So this safe space. So one is a, um, a safe space, one safe space is a journal. You could also have it with a friend or you could come home and do a Shirley Valentine and talk to the wall. I said, there's nothing wrong with being like Shirley Valentine. Okay. You can still come back and just go, hey wall. Okay. And if you've not watched it, I recommend you do. I actually kind of love that film. Okay. So number one, we're going to be kind to ourselves. Two, we're going to give ourselves a safe space to release our emotions. Okay. Now, number three, I did speak about this last week, is mindfulness and meditation. Because unless we're gonna take a sense of calmness into our minds and our bodies, then our emotions are not gonna match, okay? Remember, everything is linked, okay? So this is why my symbols, three triangles, three points, three parts, we are part of one, okay? The heart, the body, and the mind. Connect them, okay? Now, if you take the time to meditate to be more mindful, then of course, again, it's like another release of those emotions. So you're starting to feel this bubbling pot. You sort of let them go because you either go through them and just find the time and just find the stillness, or you sort of give yourself the safe space to release, really see the connection, safe space, okay? It's also being kind to yourself. So there is a lot of interlink here, but you can do these things in different ways. So mindfulness meditation, if you need some help, do check back on the last one I did because there are some tips and tricks of how to do that, okay? Now, we're gonna do um, three more. I've got three more for you, okay? So the next one is about what you share out, okay? Because we talk about our emotional well-being, okay? But one thing that we need to be respectful of or mindful of is what we're putting out, okay? So think about this, is energy, okay? So if you have um, a piece of metal and you heat the one end up, it'll be very soon that the heat will conduct down this piece of metal and come through the hand, okay? So you're, if you had it on one hand, this is heating, you gently feel the heat, okay, conducts, okay? That's the same with your energy that you give out. So if you're someone who's like big in the law of attraction and attracting what you are, then this is gonna really connect with you because you, if you're constantly coming home and speaking. So a safe space to vent can work, but if you're always coming home and venting the same thing, the same frustrations, the same words, then of course you're just impacting and pushing on the same negatives, okay? And you're pushing all of this hot energy out. And again, we all vent at times. So that's why I say safe space, having a wall, talking to the wall, letting it go but it's that letting go process, okay? We need to remember what we give to others because remember, if we're constantly giving someone negative, then of course they're just gonna absorb it, okay? So when we think about what we give to others, we may have a friend that we vent with, 
beautiful, that's great. Share thoughts, share ideas, share a bond. But also don't always share the negatives. Remember to share the joy. Remember to share the good times. Maybe have a vent coffee. The next time go and do something fun and enjoyable. Play a game together, watch a movie, do something, okay? Because what we wanna do is share that kindness to other people. And what people do is they take your energy. Of course, negative energy, a lot of venting. Occasionally we go, yeah, okay, I can take it. This is okay. But think about your emotional resilience. How does it feel when somebody is constantly offloading and telling you the same story, the constant pressures, constants, constants? Your emotional resilience can only take so much unless you can build it up or let it go. Okay, you need to be then really resilient if you're constantly having somebody push on you because then they become a drain. Okay, now a drain is somebody who just constantly sucks that energy, and somebody who's always negative is a drain. Okay? We're not being drains, we're not having a vent in post. They are a friend or a person you talk to. Remember, it's a two way street, so positive and negatives get shared. Don't always vent, share the goods as well. Okay, now. Number six, okay? So we're gonna look at the cultivation, the space that we're creating, okay? So we want to be emotionally resilient. So we need to have something that feels good for us. So we need a home space, okay? So think about your space for where you sit down and relax. Maybe you sit and read a book, okay? We need these spaces where we feel comfortable and happy and safe. We need, if you're working from home, you have a workspace and you have a bed space or you have a leisure space on all this, okay? Now this in action, when I was locked down one, okay, I shared a house, okay, absolutely fantastic, great, had a housemate, got on with, and we're still friends. So I know some people haven't managed that, but there were some days it was really tough, simply because I was working on my bed for part of it, uh, or, Literally, I could sit on my bed on my computer and my housemate was the same. It actually pushed our emotional resilience above and beyond. So creating these safe spaces or these spaces where you let go and no one comes into, as it were, that you allow yourself to switch off, you allow yourself to let go of the work, the pressure, and you just have to relax and chill out in. Those spaces are needed. So giving yourself that space Okay, so not just the space to let it out into, but the space where you kind of shut it out and you go into like a bubble, okay? Because even like now, this is my workspace, okay? This is why a lot of my interviews and stuff, I do sit here because this is my work bubble, okay? And I know some people keep saying, oh yeah, change this up, do this. And you'll see YouTubers recommending different backgrounds, do this, do this. It's about creating the space that you feel comfortable or sharing the space you feel comfortable as well. Okay, so this is the emotional well being side. You need to think about where your boundaries are with that. All right, so if you are still with me and tuning in and you do like this video, then obviously drop in a quick like. And of course, do let me know if there's something particular that you're struggling with for your wellness wow day. Okay, because these are for you, I'm here to help you. Now, the last one. Okay, so this we've got. We are um, being kind to ourselves. We're giving ourselves a safe space to release this emotion. You know, we're doing this kindness to others. We've got all this stuff going on, okay? Now, we've talked about space and, and giving yourself that safe space because obviously we want to have a positive space. So that's also like the layout of the room. Is it built for the space and things like this, okay? So like, is your bedroom built for sleep or is it built for working, right? You build the space exactly how you want it. Okay. Oh, my throat's going. Okay. So where's my last one? Okay. Um, we're going to look at empathy. Now, empathy is and compassion are, some ways people think they're, they're funny things. Okay. But to show empathy and compassion is to show understanding without judgment. Okay. Because think about it this way. You're at a till. Okay. You're going to pay with your card. You go and pay with your card and they go, your card doesn't work. You go, okay, I'll try it again. No, no, your card doesn't work. It's saying failed. So you try like four or five times. You go like going, you're getting this point. I'm stressed and, and this is the only card you've got. Okay, so there they're going, it does work. And you all get this frustration of going, it does work. They go, no, 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 
maybe you have got enough money in your account, maybe it's expired, and the cashier is trying to help you, okay? You're just getting frustrated because then you're feeling a level of embarrassment and this stress and all of this is going on because you've just been suddenly told that your card does not work, okay? Now, that's a simple thing, everyday life, and of course it can happen to any of us at any point, okay? I kicked off in Lidl nearly once because the tills weren't working properly and they didn't like it contactless. And I never used contactless. I always have my card. So the fact I was doing it contactless, I was getting more frustrated because I was like, the one time I don't bring my card and I always have my card. So I was getting frustrated. And of course I was in a rush and I was like, oh my God. She's like, you just got to be patient. I was just like, and I was like, I can't change it. And literally it was just a case of, I was getting frustrated and I just went, I can't change it. That was it. So I, I can't make this go any quicker. I can't make this machine work for me. Why am I getting angry? So it's that sort of, you got that release. So when we say about judgment, because you may be that person who's getting frustrated with the card, the next person's going, oh, for fuck's sake. Right? Next time it may be you, right? So you may be the one witnessing this. Remember, that could be you. So we all like to roll our eyes and get frustrated because we've got things to do. We lead busy lives. But remembering that the empathy, compassion, this understanding for others, you know, we don't know what someone else's story is apart from that moment. Even if you're there, your friend, they could have come by a bus journey and witnessed something that you don't even want to think about. We don't know. We don't know the story until this point. There's something we don't know. And and of course, if we're showing this empathy and compassion, then of course it brings us from a sort of a welcoming, calming sort of center. So people are more likely to then talk to you if there is a problem. And I know sometimes we don't wanna hear a stranger in the streets problem. Again, I know that refers back to our busy lives, but take it this way, you've got five minutes. We've all got five minutes just to slow down and just to give somebody the time of day, say, look, I'm really sorry I can't talk, but are you okay? And I tell you what, because that few moments of empathy, compassion, and offering this sort of loving support to someone else will actually help them emotionally because it gives them that push of positivity. Remember I shared about the friend, the push and pull? You're then giving them this push of positivity. So if somebody is struggling and just venting out all this negative, this kindness and compassion just throws some positive back. It helps with the mood, the emotion, their emotional mood, helps calm them down, but it also gives you a defense because then you're going, I'm not taking this in. I'm, I'm just giving positive, I'm all right. And it actually feels so much better because then guess what? You take into an act of kindness. And if you caught my short video on kindness, kindness without expectation, gives you a genuine boost for your happiness. So it gives you natural boost of endorphins and feel goods. So what's not to love, right? Just by taking a moment. So guys, I recommend you take the time, meditate, calm, find your space, say safe space to release your emotions. Because when you do this, not only will you find your emotions generally calmer, so less stressful, but when you suddenly get into these stressful situations, you will actually be able to recognize when you're bubbling up, like I did in Lidl. I'm bubbling up, I'm getting stressful, and there's no point. I'm not shouting at anyone, what's the point? Let it go. And to be honest, it went through quickly, and I was home with completely on time, no problems because I just relaxed and I didn't let it ruin my day. Of course, I remembered it because it wasn't that long ago, but it can then hang over you. We don't want to hang over. We want to build it up. So if we do all these practices, we build this emotional well-being. So we have ourselves feel better day to day. It means that when these situations do arise, then we can recognize when we need a bit more space, when we need a bit more time. But above all, we can then communicate what we need. So we can tell a loved one, a partner, a friend, I need some space, I'll speak to you next week, I'm just focused on this, I need downtime or whatever it is you need, okay? You can then share that and support others with it, 
okay? So hopefully this has been useful for you guys. I encourage you to put those practices in place. Even just one will actually add value to you. And of course, if there is something that you are particularly looking for support with, then do let me know and let's help us create your wellness wow day. Otherwise, until then, have a great rest of your day.